We're with Dr. Bruce Cuthbert, the uh, director of the Research Domain Criteria Project at the National Institute of Mental Health and previously was the acting director of the NIMH. So Dr. Cuthbert, you talked about how the, the current disease model is no longer valid for research into mental illness. Tell me, give me a brief overview, what is the current disease model and why is it no longer valid? Sure. Uh, we have two very related diagnostic systems. One is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, published by the American Psychiatric Association. The other is the International Classification of Diseases, put out by the World Health Organization, that is the ICD. Uh, the actual categories that are listed in these manuals are virtually identical, probably 95% overlapping. Uh, these manuals follow the classic psychiatric tradition of diagnostic diagnosing diseases based on sets of symptoms. Uh, the DSM formalizes this to say that you have to have, for instance, five out of a possible nine syndromes or four out of seven, whatever, in order to receive a diagnosis. The ICD is a little more relaxed, simply listing the prototype features. The problem is that in research now with our modern techniques of genomics and neuroimaging, sophisticated behavioral science, we found that these categories brought to us on the basis of presenting symptoms and signs by pr traditions really don't work for research. Uh, we find that any one given disorder has many different mechanisms involved. Uh, and on the other hand, if we say take one mechanism like working memory uh, or emotion regulation, we find almost exactly the same patterns in many different disorders. So our disorders really don't have much specificity to help us really understand the individual patient uh, and doing a better job of treating them. Okay, and so the, the DSM, the ICD, are these things that were made sense and were relevant 30 or 40 years ago and it's just time to kind of move on from them? Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, the modern DSM was the DSM-3 that came out in 1980 and there was a similar version of the ICD that came out then. Before that, diagnosis was largely uh, mired in the psychodynamic era uh, and the diagnosis almost depended on the theoretical uh, predispositions of the individual therapist. So they really needed something that was standardized and by standardizing symptom descriptions and codifying that, they were actually able to bring mental health disorders research into the modern era. So uh, I liken it to sort of a car line that you have a very successful car that comes out and for a while that's the state of the art but finally things catch up and you need to start over and build a brand new car. Uh, so the DSM and the ICD have driven a tremendous amount of good and are still invaluable for clinical work. They still remain our clinical systems. Uh, but for research we need to move in new directions that can provide us the information we need to make revisions to these manuals in the future. And at the NAMH has the peer review grant-making decision-making process is that is it is it still using DSM and ICD based uh, uh, criteria to award grants or are you changing that as well we've actually shifted that because a big part of our research domain criteria framework is to provide an alternative set of review criteria based on very specific behavioral functions like fear or emotion regulation or sleep uh, and putting those into review. However, we still also fund uh, research grants that are based on our DSM system. So it's really about a 50-50 mix right now. Okay, now you, uh, you point out one journal article uh, that had, uh, came with the headline, Schizophrenia Does Not Exist. Give me a brief description. What is that study and is that statement, Schizophrenia Does Not Exist, is that, is that considered a, a kind of a provocative or controversial statement these days, or is that kind of where the research community is? Uh, the paper you mentioned was by a Dutch psychiatrist named Jim Van Oos. Uh, it didn't reflect a specific study, but rather was a review of several different studies. Uh, that is a controversial and provocative statement. Much of the field still believes in schizophrenia as a specific entity, but what Van Oos is getting at is the idea that schizophrenia is actually a spectrum with a wide range of severity, and only 30% of the patients patients who are actually on this spectrum have full-blown schizophrenia. Meanwhile, 70% of the patients have disorders that fall short of that severity, things like transient psychotic episodes, schizophreniform disorder, and so forth. But clearly, from a public health standpoint, uh, if there are 70% of the patients with varying impairments along the spectrum, uh, we're really failing a lot of our population to whom we almost don't attend at all. Okay, and finally, what's the end result of all of this? Is it a a change in the DSM, a kind of a 
alternative to the DSM? Where is this leading? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, and in fact, the first one is right. What we are trying to do with this research domain criteria or RDOC project is to create a large database that can inform the ways in which we would think about revisions to the DSM and the ICD in the future so that we can take into account genomics, neurobiology, sophisticated behavioral science, and other measures to better understand our mechanisms of disorders and get us to better treatments. And so we have no intention of going into business and setting up an alternative nosology. Rather, we want to inform the current nosologies. And I think everybody wants to work towards this goal, and so we are trying to help with that in the way that we fund our research.